where the nation is praying for the recovery of the country's cine icon Amitabh Bachchan and his son Abhishek Bachchan, even as it learned today that his daughter-in-law Aishwarya Rai and uh, grandchild Aradhya have also tested positive of the disease. We'll get to details on that on Newsnight tonight. I'm Gautam Roy. And uh, we also talked to our guests about the fresh internal crisis in the Congress in Rajasthan that has again raised questions about the capability and the willingness of its top leadership to keep the parties flock together in the face of challenges. But first, our headlines. Dark clouds of dissent threaten the Congress's Ashok Gehlot government in Rajasthan. Deputy CM Sachin Pilot livid over being issued notice related to an SOG probe into horse trading charges to destabilize his own government. Several MLAs camp in Delhi, audience not granted by high command yet. The BGP says the Congress's internal strife has come to the fore. Congress leaders express concern at the state of affairs in the party as Rajasthan's power tussle splits and comes out in the open. Kapil Sibyl strikes a cautionary tone in his tweet, says, Will we wake up after horses have bolted? Jyotiraditya Sindhya says, Talent gets no credence in the Congress. Many states announced lockdown for the next few days. Uttar Pradesh decides on lockdown on every weekend to contain the spread. Shillong imposes complete lockdown on Monday and Tuesday. Strict implementation in Bengaluru during Sunday lockdown. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan visits the world's largest COVID care centre in Bharti Mines in Delhi. India fights all out against COVID-19. Recovery rate climbs to about 63%. 2,92,258 active cases in the country. The death count in Maharashtra crosses 10,000 mark. A day after Amitabh Bachchan and Abhishek test positive, Megastar's daughter-in-law Aishwarya and granddaughter Aradhya also confirmed to be COVID-19 positive. Union Home Minister Amit Shah participates in a mega plantation drive initiated by the Central Armed Police Forces to plant 1.37 crore saplings in their campuses by this month end. Says India is in a good position in the battle against the coronavirus pandemic and the country will fight the disease with determination and enthusiasm. Uttar Pradesh constitutes a one-member commission to probe the Kanpur ambush and the encounter of gangster Vikas Dubey. SIT probing the local police's alleged connivance with Vikas Dubey visits Bikru village. The flood situation remains grim in many states. Rivers are flowing above the danger mark in Bihar. NDRF teams are engaged in relief and rescue operations in Assam. The Med Department has forecast heavy rainfall for the next five days in the Northeast, in West Bengal and many districts of Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. And BCCI President Saurav Gangli confirms that the Indian team will be travelling down under for a test series this year, once a shorter than mandated quarantine period for two weeks for the entire cricket team. Well, first up after Madhya Pradesh, now dark monsoon clouds are threatening to sweep away the Congress government in Rajasthan in a deluge of discontent and lack of decisive action from the top leadership. A series of events originating from the Rajya Sabha elections held last month has led to a situation where Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot and his deputy Sachin Pilot appear to be in a tug of war with Delhi High Command Court in the middle. Here are the details. The state may be different, but events seem to be on the same track. Internal differences claim the Congress government in Madhya Pradesh. And now it seems to be Rajasthan's turn. The clash between Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot and his deputy Sachin Palat has come to the fore in the state. The two top leaders are caught in a battle for supremacy. 
a case registered by the state police's special operations group adding fuel to the fire. It stemmed from a bid to keep an eye on horse trading of MLAs during last month's Rajya Sabha polls. But it led to a notice for questioning being issued to Sachin Pilot. Sachin Pilot is said to be extremely upset and Sunday saw him camping almost all day long in Delhi seeking an audience with the Congress High Command. Sources say he has support of at least 13 Congress and three independent MLAs. And in this context, Chief Minister tweeted, Notices for giving simple statements have been issued to Chief Minister, Deputy CM, Chief Whip and some other ministers as well as MLAs in the context of the complaint made by Congress Legislative Party to the SOG alleging horse trading of BJP leaders. Portraying this in another light by a section of media is not done. Congress is not a good thing. Meanwhile, the central leadership has deputed three Congress leaders, Ajay Makan, Randeep Surjewala and Avinash Pandey, to Jaipur to handle the situation. Prior to this, political developments took a sudden turn in Rajasthan when Gehloth accused the BJP of attempting to buy off Congress MLAs to destabilize his government. The BJP has dismissed Gehloth's charge, saying the Congress government's crisis is a result of its own internal tussle. <laughs> ये अपनी कमजोरी को हमारे माथे मरना चाह रहे हैं किसके नंबर पूरा एक महीना हो गया एसओजी भी यहीं थी एसी भी यहीं थी पता नहीं कोई अननोन नंबर ढूंढे और बीजेपी सरकार गिरा रही है अपनी कमजोरी हमारे माथे क्यों द कांग्रेस हैज 107 एमएलएज इन राजस्थान्स 200 मेंबर असेंबली इट आल्सो एंजॉयज द सपोर्ट ऑफ स्मॉलर पार्टीज एंड इंडिपेंडेंट एमएलएज the BJP has 72 members in the state assembly. The crisis in Rajasthan Congress prompted former Congress and BJP leader in MP Jyotiraditya Sindhya to weigh in, saying, Sad to see my erstwhile colleague Sachin Pilot too being sidelined and persecuted by Rajasthan CM Ashok Gehloth. Shows that talent and capability find little credence in the Congress party. Senior Congress leader Kapil Sibyl also seemed worried. He tweeted, Worried for our party. Will we wake up only after the horses have vaulted from our stables? Kapil Sibyl is only the latest among a string of leaders like P. Chidambaram, Sanjay Jha, Jairam Ramesh and Shashi Tharoor who have repeatedly wondered about the fate of the Congress whenever it faces internal crisis like the one in Rajasthan. The question is whether High Command is listening and is it willing to stem the rot eating away at its shoots and roots at the same time? With inputs from Dharmesh Bharti, Vishal Baristo in Jaipur and Ajay Vikram Singh in Delhi, Newsnight Desk, DD India. Well, just as we said that Rajasthan is not the only case in point. It's been now a pattern with the Congress when we talk about something that we've been witnessing through the months and years, especially recently. Uh, what happened just a little way back was Madhya Pradesh. It was lost 23rd of March 2020. 22 Congress MLAs resigned and joined the BJP. Dissenting disarray is what is evident here. Jyotiraditya Sindhya led the Congress rebel MLAs. Then Congress uh, Chief Minister Kamal Nath had to resign before the floor test could be you know, taken within one week of that happening. The BJP formed the government again under the leadership of Shivraj Singh Chauhan in Madhya Pradesh. Moving further on, if you look at what happened in Karnataka, where it was a hit wicket because in May 2018, the BJP emerged as the single largest party with 105 MLAs after state polls in 225 member assembly. But what happened after that? Uh, the, of course, uh, Congress uh, had won 78 seats and JDS had won 34 as well. Then B.S. Yadirupa stayed claim to form the government and was sworn in as well but his government fell after he couldn't prove his majority. What happened after that? Well, the Congress uh, led up uh, and uh, it tied up with the uh, JDS and uh, made a leader of smaller party in the assembly, H.D. Kumaraswamy, the chief minister. But thereafter, the Congress-JDS government collapsed after 14 months. 
because 17 Congress and JDS MLAs resigned. And the problem was there were differences with Kumaraswamy and also problems with the style of functioning that led to the rebellion. And the Speaker also disqualified the rebel MLAs, bringing the House's strength down, the effective strength, to 207. And that made it all the more easier for Yadirupa to sail through in the government formation process with the support of 106 MLAs being in his kitty. BJP's numbers also swelled to 218 after 12 disqualified MLAs won on the BJP ticket in December 2019 by polls. Now let's look at what happened in Meghalai where it was pummeled by the Congress because in 2018 BJP outsmarted the Congress despite winning just two seats in the 60-member House. The Congress got 21 seats and the BJP ally NPP got 19. But the Congress dilly-dallied and the BJP moved quickly to fly in senior leaders Kiran Rijiju and Himant Biswa Sarma. BJP leaders negotiated swiftly to win support of uh, local parties. The Congress too tried, tried really hard to ensure that it too also cobbles a majority of senior leaders, Ahmed Patel and Kamal Nath, were sent to Shillong. But the BJP had a quick start and it was off the blocks first and got the required support. NPP-led alliance got the support of 34 MLAs and formed the government in Meghale. One of the two BJP MLAs, Alexander Haig, was also made state minister. Further on, if you look at what happened in Goa, where it was a case of Go Goa gone because the Congress emerged as the single largest party in the 40-member assembly after the elections with 17 seats, the BJP finished with 13 MLAs. Now, Congress leader who was in charge of Goa, Digvijay Singh, just kept waiting for the high command's uh, instructions, directions as to how to proceed, you know, getting the other numbers together. The BJP again moved swiftly, led by Nitin Gadkari and late uh, Mohan Manohar Parikar, I beg your pardon. And uh, BJP leaders then negotiated with regional outfits MGP and GFP. It also worked out a solution and a compromise with regional alliance and then formed the government in Goa. Divijay Singh, in fact, uh, later blamed the Congress for the Goa debacle. Let's also recount for you what happened in Manipur, it was a case again of uh, something that happened in Goa, similar to that. Goa happened as Congress didn't learn any lessons from Manipur debacle, really. And what happened in Manipur? Well, 2017, the Congress won 28 seats in the 60-member assembly after the state elections. And that was when the BJP got just 12 seats. But the BJP sent Piyush Goel and Prakash Javrekar to hold parleys with possible allies. What happened after that? Neda Kanvira, Himant Viswa Sarma also played a key role in those negotiations. Former Congress leader N. Biren Singh, who switched to the BJP, announced uh, he was announced as the CM designate. The BJP brought on board four NPP MLAs, five regional party MLAs, and one defected Congress MLA to form the government. And N. Biren Singh then became the first BJP chief minister in Manipur. Another northeast state, let's talk about that as well, Arunachar was also frittered away and that happened in 2014 when the first uh, Modi won, the first NDA government led by Prime Minister Modi came to power right after that. Congress formed the government after assembly elections winning 44 seats in the 60 member state assembly. 44 seats, a lion's share. Congress lost the plot two years down the line. Congress MLA Pema Khandu left the party with some rebel MLAs to form a regional outfit PPA. That's what happened first. Then Khandu took his party into the BGP-led North East Democratic Alliance, NEDA, which him and Biswasarva formed. Now, July 2016, Khandu returned to the Congress with rebel MLAs and became chief minister, replacing Nabam Tuki. Quickly after that, September 2016, Khandu joined the PPA again, taking 43 of the Congress's 44 MLAs. And then after that, Khandu formally joined the BJP next month, taking 33 of the 43 MLAs. Uh, PP expelled uh, Pema Khandu, but by then he had state claim to form the government with 33 MLAs. So that's uh, how things have gone as far as uh, 
the Congress's uh, handling of crises, internal crises, has uh, taken place. Uh, let's uh, go across, in fact, to now my colleague in Jaipur, Vishal Baristo, and find out more in terms of what is the latest on how this crisis is being handled. Vishal, what is the latest update? Well, a very good evening to you, Gautam. Uh, you explained it very well. Uh, from the extreme northeast Arunachal to the extreme west uh, Rajasthan, the story of Congress has been that they have uh, won the race, but it is uh, the BJP who lifted the trophy. Now, as far as the today's development is concerned, uh, we get to know that the audience has not been granted uh, to Sachin Pilate, though he has spoken to Rahul Gandhi, Associates Tellers, and three top leaders of the Congress Party, Randeep Surjewala, Ajay Makan, and also uh, uh, Pandey. Mr. Pandey has been rushed to Jaipur. Uh, right now, a dinner has been uh, hosted by Chief Minister at the CMR in Jaipur, and even Sachin Pilate is expected to attend that. Tomorrow at 10.30 p.m., again, uh, there has been a meeting called by the Chief Minister, and a compromise formula is uh, being tried to somehow uh, find out uh, as to how to bring both the warring leaders uh, on the table, talking table first, and then uh, uh, come out with a compromise formula. Because Sachin Pilate, uh, uh, the news of Sachin Pilate uh, becoming the chief minister or uh, starting off a revolt in Rajasthan started the very day when uh, Jyotir Aditya formally joined the BJP and uh, social media was full of news that now Sachin Pilate can also uh, leave the party or become the chief minister because remember he is holding two important positions in Rajasthan. He is the deputy chief minister. Along with that, he is also the PCC chief. And recently, uh, 103 IS officers were transferred along with uh, uh, in a separate list. Uh, some senior IPS officers were also transferred. So uh, that has gone uh, not very well with the uh, deputy chief minister. And then the SOG is having notices to him. Uh, he took it very personally, though the chief minister did some damage control, uh, uh, tweeting that it is not only the deputy chief minister, but he himself, the party chief whip, and all the MLAs in question, they have all been given this uh, notice that they need to re register their comments uh, so that uh, a formal uh, uh, investigation right. could be held. But as of now, the situation is uh, very tense for the Congress. So all this, Vishal... Uh, all this has been playing out for quite some time now. This is just, uh, you know, the matter coming to a head completely and becoming completely apparent. What has the High Command been up to? You know, uh, you are sitting in uh, Jaipur, but, uh, you know, you've been keep keeping tags uh, on what's been happening in Delhi as well. Well, absolutely, Gautam. It all started off uh, from the very first day when the results were out. Even before that, uh, uh, let me tell you for the benefit of our viewers that uh, even during elections, uh, when uh, the Congress were preparing for the elections and uh, people used to ask uh, Ashok Gehlot as to who's going to be the chief minister, if Congress wins, uh, because there has been a tendency in Rajasthan, first BJP, then Congress, and we have alternate uh, government parties ruling the state in Rajasthan. Uh, so Ashok Ganot was quick enough to uh, say that uh, there has uh, the history tells us that the PCC chief has never been the chief minister. Now this is I'm talking about before elections. This is Ashok Ganot going on record in the press conference saying. So it was very much clear that Ashok Gehlot will not let go this opportunity to become the chief minister of Rajasthan once again. While uh, Sachin Pilot and his supporters, uh, they were all very much hoping that Sachin Pilot, since he has played a key, key role in the uh, party's uh, re uh, coming back to power in Rajasthan, so he might be giving the opportunity. And also, I was covering that uh, whole incident where a meeting was being held and a lot of hectic uh, parlays were on at the PCC here in Jaipur. Uh, supporters of Sachin Pilot were shouting and uh, they also vandalized uh, the property, public property, when it was announced, formally announced that Ashok Gehlot would be heading the state as far as Rajasthan is concerned. So uh, the drama started not uh, the day when Congress came to power in Rajasthan, but, uh, but before the, even before that during elections. And the day when Jyotir Aditya formally joined the BJP, okay. it, uh, the, it, was, uh, uh, it was quite an open secret that now Rajasthan could go the way uh, Madhya Pradesh, could, right. go, could follow the uh, example of Madhya Pradesh. And that yes. is a worrying factor. But the, definitely a very big question as to what the party high command has been doing uh, all so far because uh, it's been two years Certainly. now. We'll be, we'll, be, we'll be exploring that question further, Vishal, uh, with our guests as well. Thanks a lot for joining us for the time being. Uh, taking a quick break at the moment, uh, we'll be back uh, with our uh, In Focus as well. Stay tuned to Newsnight.
ये कहूँगा कि सारे जो सोसाइटी के लोग हैं यंग एंड ओल्ड सबको इकट्ठे मिल इस लड़ाई जो पैंडमिक है इससे लड़ना है और इसमें सिटीजन पार्टिसिपेशन लोगों का पार्टिसिपेशन बहुत ज़्यादा जरूरी है हम सब अगर लोग इकट्ठे मिल एक ये प्रतिज्ञा लेने की हम इस पैंडमिक से लड़ेंगे और जो जो मेजर्स प्रिवेंशन के लिए हम कर सकते हैं वो करेंगे तो हम इस पैंडमिक को रोक पाएंगे और ज़्यादा केसेस ना होने देंगे उसमें तीन चार चीज़ें बहुत ज़रूरी हैं एक तो ये ज़रूरी है कि हम पैनिक ना करें डोंट गो बाय र्यूमर्स गो टू ऑफिशियल वेबसाइट्स गवर्नमेंट की एक वेबसाइट है जहाँ पे सारे डूज एंड डोंट्स बताए जाते हैं उसको फॉलो करें दूसरा ये है कि आप रेगुलर अपने आप को क्राउडेड एरिया से जाने के लिए रोक ना जाएँ अवॉइड ऑल नॉन एमरजेंसी ट्रैवल गोइंग टू प्लेसेज जहाँ पे क्राउड है तीसरा ये कि रेगुलर हैंड वॉशिंग करें क्योंकि हम अगर बाहर जाते हैं किसी चीज़ को टच करते हैं तो वायरस आपके हाथ में आने का डर रहता है आप रेगुलरली चाहे सोप वाटर से साबुन से और पानी से ही हाथ धोएं और हाथ अच्छी तरह से धोएं हथेलियों पे ही नहीं पीछे वाले हिस्से में भी उंगलियों के बीच वाले हिस्से में भी और नाखून और अंगूठे सब पे साबुन लगा के उसको अच्छी तरह से धोएं और अगर खांसी है Uh, going back to the Rajya Sabha elections, pointing fingers elsewhere, and he's not looking at what's been happening even before this present crisis really raised its head, and that's been a problem right since the inception of this government in Ra of Rajasthan. Gautam, your package, your news desk has given a very tremendous amount of packaging. The entry and Vishal, your correspondent, has given everything, leaving nothing to me or to Sanjay. But at the same time. two analysis i want to make one congress is in a deep crisis at the national level at the state level because mr ashok gehlot who brought this crisis <coughs> to the forefront by issuing the notice to the police and the police gave notice to mr ashok gehlot <coughs> and also to mr sachin pilot and also to 11 mlas that's a different story i categorically say congress presently they have come across this type of some solution working formula but that is not going to last long it's only a temporary arrangement overall if you see congress crisis is not over now it is a quick fix solution i understand there are three or four angles to that because the <coughs> Sorry, because of the panchayat elections to be held next month, that's the Supreme Court order. Right. Therefore, Mr. Ashok Gehlot wants Sachin Pilot removed as the PCC chief. That is the main crisis, main crux. Tomorrow, if the formula is worked out, Sachin Pilot may lose the member, the chairmanship of PCC, and give way to Mr. Ashok Gehlot. In return, he may get the good portfolio. That is the compromise formula. which is being worked out in jaipur but that will be a temporary one as jodhi ratya sindhya said congress is in a deep crisis as jairam ramesh says congress is in icu it is an existential crisis therefore the rajasthan government may not see the 2021 year it will collapse in another two or three months right uh, so that's uh, your uh, prediction <coughs> in terms of what will be the fate of the rajasthan government uh, and uh, primarily sanjay in your assessment will that be a consequence of uh, what is happening internally in rajasthan or what is not being done in delhi what well, about its combination of both congress's central leadership or party as a whole has become rudderless uh, forget about ideology congress lost uh, ideology thing long long back but it does not even have ideas <coughs> and as to anything as to how to move the party forward congress high command high command is the, uh, the in congress you use the word high command and what is high command sonia gandhi rahul gandhi priyanka gandhi and nobody else and uh, we so far in any crisis there have been situations where rahul gandhi practically had no communication or sonia gandhi practically had no communication with the leaders concerned and even if there was a communication sonia gandhi would say go to rahul gandhi and rahul gandhi would say talk to uh, 
uh, Sonia Gandhi. And this uh, ping pong between mother and son, you need to have that kind of vigor. You need to have that kind of grit. You need to have that kind of ideas. Your ideas are only limited to coming sometimes on, uh, on Twitter and uh, have some interviews, compete with a television anchor to have interviews and put, post that on YouTube and uh, be uh, critical of anything and everything concerning Prime Minister Modi. And time and again, is, it has proved that um, the much he targets Prime Minister Modi, Modi's popularity goes on, in, uh, in fact, further goes up. And what kind of, uh, and when party's energy is spent only in the making a clam, that Rahul Gandhi please return as party president. Right. In a situation where he has consistently failed. Then you can well imagine fate of the leaders. Remember, nobody, like politics is also a profession. I don't consider it a social service. But if you're in politics, the leaders also consider those who move out, their stability, their prospects, current and future in that particular party.